It is crazy to think about, but about six years ago, I made a little prototype called Prime Premonition. I've actually mentioned that game before on this channel, but it was my first real project that I actually got some real work done on. That game has always had a special place in my heart because it was one of my first real projects. That game never came to life, but with where our studio is at now, you know, just coming off of the cancellation of our previous game, I wanted to revisit that game because I wanted to find a new style for a studio to sort of represent and I wanted to go back to where it started. Prime Premonition was basically a Frogger clone, but I felt that there was something special about it. With that game, I always struggled with its purpose, what I wanted to learn from it, and how it would stand out. Also, just my lack of knowledge in making games kept me from making any real headway. Well, after a few long, long years and some real-time cooking, I think I have finally found it. This is Prepare the Past, the natural evolution of Prime Premonition. Prepare the Past is about, well, you know, you guessed it probably, preparing the people of the past for their doomed future. You're someone from the future tasked with investigating the timeline and presenting those findings to the people of the past so that they can change it and save themselves. I don't think I've ever been this excited about a, making a game before. I'm recording this video in the night and my voice is all wrecked, but I am pumped like I have never been before to make a game. I always wanted to make a game that looked like this, but I thought that I couldn't. Games like Octopath Traveler always made my jaw drop, but I never believed in myself enough to try to bring something like that to life. Pixel art has always had a special place in my heart, but again, I thought in order to make a quote unquote modern game, I needed to make something big and in 3D and that pixel art had no part in that. Well, Octopath proved otherwise. I also wanted to take a moment to sort of break down what's going on here. First off, sprite billboarding. Sprite billboarding is basically making it so that game objects or anything that you want always faces the camera. And this makes it seem like things like 2D sprites aren't just paper thin, but actual real objects in the world. This is a total no brainer when it comes to making something like this. And I just had no idea it existed. I mean, I played games like Doom growing up, but I didn't know people still used it. I just thought that it was a relic of the past that was forgotten. Another thing is post-processing, something much, much easier to implement than I thought it would be. This adds a cool bloom effect and just gives everything more life with deep contrast and saturation. And, and that's just it. I also want to shout out working in 3D, like post-processing. I have never worked in 3D before, other than opening a project, looking at it for five seconds and then clicking off. And I made this in like four-ish weeks. I say that not to toot my own horn, but to say that we often hold ourselves back from things we think we can't do, when in reality, we haven't even tried. We can do so much more than we think when we just put in a little time and effort into learning. Last thing I wanna say is that this game is truly just a representation of everything I've learned over the past seven years. Things like the particle effects, something that I implemented way back at Across the Creek, and just working with all the tools that I've acquired and talked about and learned about, like Photopea and Miro, have just been amazing to work with. Next week, I'm going to be breaking down all of the mechanics of this game, its gameplay and all that good juicy stuff, which honestly, this is basically just a mini open world Pokemon Snap game. So yeah, you are definitely not going to want to miss it. But before I go, I wanted to talk about one last thing, and that is the purpose of this game. Something that I struggled with with Prime Premonition. I would love to make a million bucks off this game, but the reality is that's probably not going to happen. I'd be happy if this game just sold 10 copies, to be honest. But the purpose of this game is one thing. It's not money, it's not fame, it's not glory. It's one thing. It is simply to learn. I have never released a commercial game before. I have no idea what it's like to support a game post-launch. I have no idea what it's like to have people pay to buy your game or even what it's like to finally finish a game and let it go and let it be what it is in all of its buggy glory. Even making a Steam page. I'm working on it right now to get that page up and I wanted it to be up for the release of this devlog but since I've never done it before I had no idea just how annoying and time consuming it was to do. So if you want a wish list, prepare the past, please do come back in about 24 hours and I'll have a link in the description below. So that's what this game's purpose is though, to learn. And really when I think about it, 
That's what the original iteration Prime Premonition was too. A learning experience and bringing art to life that's been living in your head for years. And then have others play it and probably poop all over it. <laughs> Game dev is awesome though. And if you want more updates on this game, Prepare the Past, that's gonna be coming out soon, hit that like and subscribe button and leave a comment below on what your game's purpose is. And if it's changed over the years that it's been in development. Again, thank you guys so much for being here. I cannot wait to show you more and I'll see you next week. See you later, everybody.